Chris, and you're watching Comics First. I'm here with David Bailey to talk about his new book, Red Thorn. Talk away. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you get free. Pitch it, pitch it. Excellent. I'm um, learning things today. Red, uh, Red Thorn is a new ongoing series from Vertigo, uh, set in modern-day Glasgow, uh, exploring the weirder edges of Scottish mythology. Uh, some stuff that you may have heard of, some stuff that you definitely haven't heard of, and we found gaps, uh, gaps in the lore uh, uh, and fables that we really wanted to tell stories about. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a story about Isla, uh, an American girl with Scottish heritage who's got incredible powers, and she comes to she comes to Glasgow to find out what happened to her sister who disappeared decades ago. And it's about Thorn, uh, an ancient pagan Scottish god who's been trapped beneath the earth for 1,600 years. Um, now, we talked about it a little bit before we actually started recording about the geographical nature of you covering Scotland because it's your home homeland. Um, talk a little bit about that. How much did that inspire um, the way you scripted the settings and everything? Well, I mean... I, I, Setting, it, setting the story in Glasgow is when the pitch came alive for me and for Vertigo uh, because I was, I was talking about I was talking about the characters I'd come up with the characters I'd come up with you know the idea of uh, touching on Scottish mythology in a way that hadn't been done in comics before and hasn't really been done in any medium before um, but as soon as we set it in Glasgow it was a couple of years ago when I started putting the pitch together it was round about the time of the Scottish independence referendum and like everyone just seemed to be talking about Scotland um, it was you know it was, there was a chance it was going to become the newest country in the world the new Doctor Who was Scottish. Everyone was talking about Scotland, and I was like, "Right, we need to we need to capture some of this in a bottle." Um, and and for me, uh, I'm biased, but I think Glasgow's the sexiest country in this in, in, in the world. It's really interesting. The people the people were unique. They're at the same time they're they're sort of angry and funny at the same time all the time. Um, and it's sort of unsett unsettling for tourists sometimes. But I really wanted to capture that and give give those characteristics as gifts to, to different characters in the cast. And I, I, I feel like I feel like that's what we've we've, we've accomplished. Uh, we also talked a little bit about the mythology you were using. Uh, we talked about I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, Go but Bala to Sicatros, um, the god of war, it's apparently a Roman god, very obscure god that you're uh, exploring in your book. Um, do you mind talking a little bit about that? And uh, pr pronunciation correction. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, the pronunciation is a guess. It's not my guess. Archaeologists have guessed uh, based on uh, sort of runic inscriptions that his, 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 his name is Belotukadros. Um, and I'm glad I pronounced it correctly. <laughs> um, so he's, he's, he's a Roman god. Um, and he was worshipped, all we really know about him was he was worshipped by sort of working class Roman soldiers, uh, around about the sort of 400 to 600 AD mark. Um, and we found shrines that, not we, I haven't found anything, uh, but archaeologists have found shrines and sort of pieced together bits, uh, 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 all, all they know about him. Uh, uh, and uh, I, uh, I was talking to Megan about this, this god, and just the more we talked about him, the more it seemed to fit with the mythology that we were building, the, the mythology that previously existed, and the mythology that we were trying to sort of create ourselves. And he seemed like a perfect villain for the piece. Um, and I won't... I think it would be a huge spoiler if I told you why he's uh, the perfect villain That's for the piece. You if you are really... To... No, I am... Um, it's because it, it is kind of what we explore in the first arc, uh -huh. why Bella t what, what Bella Tugodros wants, uh, what he's been doing for the last 1,600 years, uh, largely without human society noticing. Um, and why Thorn, uh, the, the sort of the, the six-pack dude in, in the comic, but why he's so angry about Bella Tukadros and what he's been doing. So that's that's kind of that's kind of what we explore in the first arc. Now, with him being uh, a Roman god, do you explore any of the other Roman gods? Now, obviously, Romans took a lot of mythology from the Greeks. Instead of Ares, it was Mars. Now, does Mars uh, play any effect in this, or are you staying with Bella? Bella Tukadros. Bella We're going to get that by the end of this interview. No, I really wanted to... I mean, we touch on a couple of myths that people definitely know about, people we're very familiar with, but I really want to stay away from Roman and Greek stuff because it's it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Especially at the time I was putting this together, I read a lot of... Any gods that were appearing in comics, I read. Uh, I, I sought it out to make sure I wasn't duplicating someone else's work. I reread. There's a comic called Slain, a uh, 2000 AD comic by Pat Mills and Simon Bisley, and it, it, it does loads of Irish mythology. And of course, there's loads, it's a huge cross crossover between Scots and Irish mythology. So I didn't want to duplicate that. I read a lot of the Wonder Woman stuff that, that, that explores, you know, 
uh, sort of classical mythology, and I really wanted to make sure I was uh, I was looking at new stuff, talking about new stuff, uh, uh, and, 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 and gods that we hadn't necessarily read about a number yeah. of times yeah. already. That we've all heard about. Yeah. Um, what uh, would be the inspiration for your main character um, and the scripting? How long did the scripting take once you had your inspiration? Like you said you talked about a lot of things going on in Scotland. You had this idea for a bit. Um, what um, built the inspiration for your main character? Someone personally, you know, maybe another character. And then on top of that, how long did the scripting take to write the first part? Like, was it a long process or a short? I know we talked a little bit before, but if you could talk about it again. Sure, sure. Well, um, the, the sort of two main characters in the first arc. Thorin is obviously the title character, um, and Shelley, Shelley Bond, the EIC at Vertigo. Um, she's really into sort of... Uh, uh, 60s uh, Brit rock. Uh, so people like um, um, well, she, she, she was she was she was she was talking about um, uh, like a number of rock stars from the 60s, like Mick Jagger. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, but yeah, so we were we were talking about sort of combining the sort of the sort of sexy snake hippedness of them and how a lot of them had their shirts open or off uh, for a lot of sort of David Bailey shoots. The other David Bailey, the photographer. Um, Adam Ant. Sorry, he was... So, so okay. she, Shelley sent me, like, a bunch of photographs of Adam Ant. She was like, this guy, this guy is visually interesting. And obviously it's not where Megan took the character when she when she was putting them together. But um, the sort of... The, the spunkiness, that's that's where we, we, we got a lot of that from. Um, and the, the other one that we were talking about was um, Renton from Trainspotting. Um, so, um... Who's, who's the actor who plays Renton? Um... Star Wars. He plays Ben Kenobi in Star Wars. Ewan McGregor. Okay, yeah, so Ewan okay, McGregor yeah, yeah. in Trainspot and has this sort of shaved head. He's very lean, very energetic. He's got a kind of manic quality to him. And we, you know, we really wanted to capture that. Uh, and a sort of a guttural quality that I think young Glaswegian men have that, that I think is quite unique to the city. Um, so I, I, I rolled all that into into um, into Thorn. Isla, um, she's, she's kind of based on, even though she's American, she is of Glaswegian descent. So I kind of based her on a lot of Glaswegian women I know. Um, my mother, for one. The, the, Glasgow breeds a very fiery kind of woman. Um, and I wanted to give her those qualities, but also the American dialect. Um, and the, you know, so, the sort of curiosity of an American in Scotland exploring the country and finding out new things. And I thought that, that, that gives a really interesting character to, to play with. Um, she's, kind of, she's kind of like a sort of like a, a muscular, angry Shirley Manson from Garbage is how I, in my mind, that's what that's what I kind of I'm writing. Um, in terms of process and how long it takes to write, um, well, I pitched it a couple of years ago, and we worked on the first arc for a, a, a while. Uh, and as soon as as soon as Megan came on board, it all kind of began to coalesce and really firm up. And now, I mean, yeah, in terms of how long it takes to write a script, my first draft. Is, is sort of around a week of every issue. Uh, but the first three issues we worked on for a few months, just nailing it down, making sure it was tight as a drum, and it really did all the all the things that we wanted and thought, thought it should do. Um, as far as... Now, when you're writing your script for each issue, does it generally take you a month, um, a little longer than that, or does it kind of depend on issue to issue? Well, it, it, it does depend issue to issue. I just finished issue seven which is a guest artist issue. Um, and I'm afraid I'm not allowed to say who's drawn it, but it's someone incredible. Um, and because Megan and I have kind of developed a shorthand now, so I kind of know I kind of know the imagery that she's going to explore. Uh, uh, and I, I can kind of request things using, you know, by, by my word choice. Whereas now I'm working with uh, someone else for a single issue. Um, I, I don't have that shorthand. So it's taken, it's taken a little while longer to make sure that I'm... A, that I'm making sense because when you're working with someone you end up you know communi communicating in grunts yeah. sometimes yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah the script's a lot longer a lot meatier um, but as soon as the pages come back in hopefully we can have a bit of a bit of a conversation about that a bit back and forth and I make sure that he's, he's you know he's happy drawing what he's drawn and he's excited about drawing it because that, that's another important thing now, uh, Megan Hetrick, she does your inks and pencils, you said. Who else is on the team um, helping you create this book, like your colors and um, everything else? Well, it's, it's actually great because Megan and myself are quite new. Uh, Megan's done, um, she did Bodies for Vertigo. She did uh, Joker's, Joker's Daughter. Okay. Um, uh, myself, this is, this is like, um, uh, uh, I've done a lot of stuff for 2000 AD, but this is kind of my, my big U.S. debut. Um, so because we're quite new, it's really cool that we, we're working with 
uh, two Stone Cold industry legends, Steve Olaf and Todd Klein. So okay, Steve, yeah. Steve Olaf uh, coloured Akira, the, yeah, the US yeah, versions yeah. of Akira. Uh, he practically invented computer colouring, and Todd Klein has yeah. more uh, uh, lettering awards than yeah. anyone else in the universe. So they're kind of they're kind of our be bedrock, um, you know. They know they they do, yeah. It, yeah yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess last question I like to ask all creators um, their advice for anyone coming up in the business. What is your advice for any new writers coming up? What advice would you give them about becoming a comic writer or even like your own experiences getting to where you are now? Well, I, I mean, I, I, I came up through self-publishing in the UK um, because there was a, a bit of a, a, a market contraction. There aren't a lot of publishers in the UK at the moment. Um, and I knew that 2000 AD was my first goal. I really wanted to work for 2000 AD. But it's, it's, you know, there, there are 20,000 people trying to work. Uh, get, get, there are 20,000 people here trying to get work in comics. So self-publish. Write and draw something yourself. Um, like, if you're a writer, actually try and learn how to draw. Do stick figure comics if you have to. Then team up with someone. You learn so much from just putting together a story, finishing a story, printing a story, if necessary, folding it and stapling it yourself, giving it to someone. That's that, that's a huge learning process, and that's you know that's that's the bedrock of uh, a lot of the craft. Awesome. Thank you very much for uh, letting us talk to you. Thank you. Um, I'm Chris, and I'm signing out for Comics First. You can find us on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, every social media uh, app there is. We're somewhere out there, so you'll find us. Um, where can we find you and the rest of your work, uh, Brian? Um, I'm, well, I'm at DavidBailey.net. Um, no, you're fine. Don't worry. <laughs> Hi, I'm Brian K. Vaughan. You can find me at uh, DavidBailey.net. <laughs> uh, I'm David Bailey on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Facebook. If you search for David Bailey, I'm sure that's me as well. So, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Have a good night.